someone lose a twenty dollar bill?
que se están leyendo el día de hoy es luchar en me gusta y compartir ese contenido con todas las personas que nos están viendo todos sus contactos. Y me more, if you write a comment in the YouTube eh, area or in Facebook, we will be able to display that comment in the screen. Si ustedes escriben un comentario, lo podemos desplegar en el screen. With that being said, thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel eh, Pache. Eh, gracias. Eh, Cultural. Thank you for the welcome, you know, for the coffee, for all the kindness, but especially for being such a strong supporters of poetry. You know, let me say this as a Colombian immigrant to New York, that I feel at home in this consulate that has been our place to celebrate poetry and diversity for eight years in a row. Muchas gracias, señora Agregada eh, Cultural, y quiero decir que un inmigrante colombiano en Nueva York que Curiosamente, me siento aquí en casa, en este consulado en la República de Argentina, en, en Nueva York, como en casa, porque durante ocho años hemos celebrado aquí la diversidad cultural en las Américas. Thank you, thank you. Muchas, muchas gracias. Irene. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Ayuda Cultural. Even us. Um, really, I need to say that we missed this place last year. But finally, we are together tonight and to enjoy again this uh, poetry reading. But, um, okay, I will start tonight. I will start tonight with uh, Gustavo Gar Artigas from Chile. que estará en la antología de la FIL, la Feria Internacional del Libro de Nueva York. Porque para mí es un honor. Estamos ya en New York, gracias a ti, a ustedes, a los, estamos gracias a ustedes acá. Hombre americano. Nací sin pasado, sin embargo, mis pies pisaban la historia. Un templo de piedra, una escalera que subía al infinito para crecer el sol, una escalera que bajaba a las profundidades para fecundar la banda de tierra, un corazón ensangrentado para el canto de humanos, intentaron olvidarme y soy una memoria. Me impusieron otros dioses y escondieron míos bajo su tierra. Me trataron como animal, y los animales sedientos de riqueza eran ellos los que intentaron dominarme. Me recogí en las alturas, bajo las alas del fondo, y me escondí bajo la tierra en oscuros apagones para sobrevivir. Besé las nubes, pero fecundé la tierra para dar frutos. Me liberé de unos en sangrientas tierras para caer en las tenazas de otros tras sangrientos golpes de Estado. Se apropiaron de mi lengua y me pusieron lengua de la La mía, la mía se fue perdiendo en el tiempo. La nueva me mostró el colectivo de los ángeles. Me enseñaron el significado de desigualdad, de obediencia. En la desigualdad me arreglé. En la obediencia aprendí a desobedecer. Violaron la mujer del tío e hicieron un mestizo. En el mestizaje aprendí a crecer, a reencontrarme, a revivir, a rodearme. Nací sin pasado y mi pasado regresa, cantando en el viento, cabalgando en la cordillera. Mi pasado, el poncho al viento, renace 
revive, se apodera de la historia, de la palabra, del presente, del futuro. Mi corazón es sangrentado, bailando, galopando al viento. A man from the Americas. I was born without a past, and yet my feet were stepping on history. A stone temple, a staircase that went up to infinity to caress the sun. A staircase that went down to the depths to fertilize the mother, mother earth. A bloody heart throbbing in my hands. They tried to forget me, and I am pure memory. Other gods were imposed on me, and I hid mine under this skin. I was treated like an animal, but the animals thirsty for wealth were them, with those who tried to subjugate me. I took refuge in the heights under the wings of a condor, and hid underground in dark sinkholes to survive. I loved the clouds but I impregnated the earth to bear fruit. I freed myself from the conquerors <coughs> in bloody wars to fall into the clutches of dictators after bloody coups of data. The first ones appropriated my language and imposed an unknown language on me. Mine was lost power. They taught me the meaning of inequality, of obedience, I rebelled against inequality, and I learned to disobey. They raped the women of my tribe, and they made me a mestizo. As a mestizo, I learned to grow, to recover, to renew, to rebel. I was born without a past, and my past returns, galloping in the wind, riding over the mountain range, my past pumps up in the wind, reborn, relives, takes over history, over the words, over the present, over the future, while my bloody heart gallops in the wind, carrying my continent on its back. La muerte de Dios. Murió en una celda a consecuencia de la tortura. Murió en el grito de una mujer clara en las calles de Colombia. Murió de hambre en Venezuela. Murió de desesperanza en los campamentos de los Incasa en San Francisco. Murió esperando una vacuna a orillas del cáncer en la India. Murió ahogado intentando escapar del infierno. Murió en los brazos de millones. Agonizó en los brazos de un hombre, de una mujer, de un niño. Murió esperando a Dios. God's death. He died in a prison cell as a result of torture. He died in the scream of a woman raped in the streets of Colombia. He died of starvation in Venezuela. He died of hopelessness in the homeless camps in San Francisco. He died waiting for a vaccine on the banks of the Ganges in India. He drowned trying to escape hell. He died in the arms of millions, agonized in the arms of a man, of a woman, of a child. He died waiting for God. <coughs> que el poemario en versión trilingüe, Deseos, Longings, Guillermo Arrecón, Poema Cuatro. ¿Cómo quisiera que mis dedos se deformaran para que cada palabra surja de todo y que nunca una palabra muda olvide el dolor recién? ¿Cómo quisiera que mis ojos fueran apagándose para que para leer una palabra 
tenga que acercarme tanto a ella y escuche su susurro, su canto de amor o sus gemidos de dolor. Como quisiera que la palabra que me me visita o me mordiera hasta arrancar sangre en el pensamiento. Como quisiera que me hiciera sentir la fragancia de una esperanza o la de de un deseo arquero de cumplimientos. Como quisiera que mi palabra fuera un puñal contra la injusticia o un pecho desnudo para defender al indefenso. Como quisiera que mi palabra cobrara sentido más allá del universo. Como quisiera, o cuando quisiera. Number four. How I wish my fingers would grow twisted so that every word would emerge from the pain and no word of mine would ever ignore the pain of others. How I wish my eyes would grow dim so that in order to read a word I'd have to draw close enough to hear its whisper, its love song, or its moans of pain. How I wish the word would caress my cheek or bite me till my thoughts bled. How I wish it would make me smell the fragrance of a hope or the stench of a sly desire decomposing. How I wish my words were a knife against injustice or a bare chest for defending the defenseless. How I wish my word would gain meaning beyond my universe. How I wish, oh, how I wish. Poème numéro 4 Je ne tant que mes doigts se déforment pour que chaque mot naisse de la douleur et que jamais un mot de moi soit étranger aux souffrances des autres. Je ne tant que mes yeux se teignent et que pour dire un mot, je vois tant m'approcher de lui que j'écoute son humour, son chant d'amour ou ses gémissements de douleur. Je me rétends que les mots caressent ma joue ou me mordent jusqu'à faire saigner ma pensée. Je me rétends qu'il apporte la rome d'un espoir ou la pestilence d'un désir sous moi se décomposant. Je me rétends que ma parole soit un poignard contre l'injustice ou une poitrine nue pour défendre le faible. Je me rétends que ma parole est du sang, au-delà de mon univers. Je me rétends. Oh, je me rétends. Tradition held on by tradition, held 
held on by a string, held on until your grasp fails. <clears throat> Let go. Are we left empty-handed? What imprint in the dust? Thank you. This is called Local News. He was arrested by the FBI for weapons possession, a self-proclaimed trial boy with previous run-ins with the law. His home was an armory of semi-automatics, blocks, and a few rapid fire. He lives a heartbeat from a school. He lives a pulse beat from my home. Why does he need an arsenal of weapons? Why does he need weapons of war? Nearby, rich people, greedy businessmen, little league coaches. How many more houses are stockpiled with ammunition for a holy war? A war of prejudice, a war within themselves, killing peace. This is called, It Lives in the Basement. Loneliness crept up the stairs, stood in a corner, observed the situation, searched for the easiest to infiltrate, curled around her unknown, smoke unseen, loneliness holds her tight. She thinks its warmth is comforting. Quickly, she's left abandoned. Alone, trying to make snow angels at midnight. <laughs> this is called Viewfinder. Struggling in solitude, camera in hand, photographing nature to block out dread. Trees burst buds, pink and white, trying to forget Corona news. Strolling in solitude, crouching to capture daffodils bloom. Mother Nature calms my nerves, photographing nature to block out dread. Blue jay jeering calls me to attention, searching songbirds perched in trees, strolling in solitude. First bumblebee finds crocus nectar as spring begins to sing again, photographing nature to black out dread. Everyone is staying home, quiet streets bring clean air, strolling in solitude, photographing nature to black out dread. This is called stumbling. Thorns, thistle, be careful, baby, that's her heart. Soft, wet, fragile. He looks at her wanting to eat her up. She looks delicious, doesn't she? Vulnerable antique lace disintegrates easily. His glass shards, invisible, pierce her skin even through the clothes she wears. The swallows will still fly over the blackberry bushes, up into the maples. She's just a girl with tears in her belly, digging in topsoil, planting deception, linking memoir to history. Jousting heart, only she understands this devastation. Newly slashed her skin force poison, oily, dark, staining sheets, infiltrating purity. Never play games with ornamental lovers. And this is a poem I wrote about my cell phone, it's called Droid. <laughs> Don't bother me, phone, let me do my work. I mute you, still you vibrate right along that little talk to me, phone. No more Instagram, no more Facebook, no more Twitter, no more TikTok. You can not me to strangers in strange places. You're my art museum, my new love interest, a card game that leaves me in solitude. Go away, phone. You're making me forget my closest friends. Your texting reply bubbles are hurting my relationships. Internet that connects the universe, internet that leads me astray, internet filled with ISIS recruiters and poetry brothels. Don't hum, don't ping, don't buzz, phone. Leave me alone, phone. Let me get my job done. Then get my journey in the sun. Relax in my skin and when evening begins and fireflies take flight, I'll be dancing in the starlight. I want to thank everybody for this festival. I just really wanted to be here. Um, my last poem is called Suitcase, um, and it's going to be in live event coming up soon. And uh, you can see some of my poetry on Instagram. You can follow me at New Part of the Great. This is called Suitcase. In the quiet time of evening, when the King song ends, the moon still shines above. 
She's packing her suitcase. What will she carry home? Under the silent stars, investments made in time multiply, or they can disintegrate by astronomical charts sent via email. Everyone knows you have to look up to see the galaxy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, You know that uh, last year we were not together, but tonight we have the opportunity to travel together. Uh, from this room, see? Next, and because we are, we are traveling, uh, we are now to Ecuador with Alex Lima. Vamos Alex. Bienvenido, Alex. Vamos Alex. So now you break from the end of all this. And again, congratulations to Carlos and Jennifer on the uh, Academy, American Academy of Poets Award. Round of applause for But now we know, at least now in this town. I embody the wireless masses and the exception, the American dream I force my name, the good neighbor to the south and your next door name. All your sins run through my veins, semen spread from north to south and back north again. I populate your flesh with thoughts and your desire. Every time you utter the word chocolate, cacao beans out of the near Amazon to satisfy the palate of your ancestors. The first four sugar, then milk, the three, five, our ancestral being to sweeten centuries of lives categorized by class, caste, and lack of ownership. I'm not a minority, at least not where you live. The house you inhabit and your last meal were fixed by the same brown hands that rolled down your spine all the way down to the nursing home where someday you will be placed to keep the illusion of youth and beauty, to keep the illusion of belonging to a silent majority. Thank you. So for this point, this is in Spanish, about 10 years ago, on the 10-year uh, anniversary of 9-11, but this year I'm going to home again. And um, the idea came about from an NPR interview where the father said, um, the father was a son of an It's like losing an arm, yet you have, you have to do all the things you used to do with both arms. Y se te quedan mirando como si te faltara un brazo, unos con asombro, otros con pena, incluso algunos con recelo, con temor de ser algo hiriente, como si de repente tuvieras el formal. Algunos prefieren mirar en otra dirección, otros se quedan contemplando el vacío de la extremidad docente, algunos directamente evitan el tema, uno que otro exige lujo de detalles. Pero las naciones están hechas de retazos, están hechas de retazos de personas, algunas sin extremidades, otras con el alma rota, pero compenetradas todas al fin, el día después de la tragedia, cuando las naciones se vuelven a levantar en barradas de sangre, de semen y de restos placentarios. Okay, esto es Spanish one. Mijo. I know I'm home when a passerby addresses me as Mijo. When an older lady hands me a meal and says, Buen provecho, Mijo. When a cab driver in Queens pulls up and asks, A donde, Mijo? When a stranger knows that something's up, Todo bien, Mijo. Mijo doesn't just mean my son, but also friend, pana, socio, sweetheart, a term with endearment easily mistaken for condescendence, 
but when the labor of affection disarms the most impenetrable of souls. They say home is where the heart is, but love dwells in the most unsuspecting moments and places. Just like when La Pachamama welcomes you with a heartwarming miko after a prolonged absence. Uno más, uno más. Ah, tenía uno de Es una joda a mes, no una oda, es una joda. <risa> ya que no se lo dice, ese libro lo publicamos en Alta Política Press. O sea, es un poema, es un poema retro futurista. Joda a mes. Balón, gambeta, recorte y polizón. Los blocos se multiplican en la cancha plantados como conos. Secuencia repetida de calcetines blancos viendo pasar en cámara lenta el duende rosarino que aparece de la nada en un recuadro de dos por dos donde el avatar de los avatares se esfuma en trazos lentos anticipando el próximo nanosegundo. Como ente retrofuturista presentiendo que el ser humano es predecible y se repite, y se repite de forma casi mecánica sobre una pantalla azul que en realidad es verde con rayas blancas y banderines. Polizón del tiempo, balón, recorte, copy and paste, imágenes sucintas de la memoria, replay, imagen congelada, o sea, Muchísimas gracias. Seres maravillosos, seres multiplicadores de vida, 
que dan vida, hacen magia con la mano, soportando un insoportable, y yo sigo aquí, esperando una utopía. Gracias. Eclipsados. La palabra inmudeció, su debilidad encarnó el deseo con un punto fijo y se desdobla para gritar en conformidad. No quiere destellos fragmentados, quizás por la oscuridad vivida, quizás por exceso de luz. Torrentes de lunas eclipsadas, eclipsadas, susurran sonidos extraños, nunca conjugados. Sus diademas doradas exhiben muecas de alegría. Danzan el día de risas coloniales. La palabra pulula con el sonido. Cantan hojas secas, teñidas del lindo arcoíris. Y muere al encuentro de la tarde en cinta de agonía. Mamá Natura. Una madre llora en silencio, su llanto no se escucha, se siente por la piel, llora por sus hijos, ellos no quieren venir, subsistencia que navega sueños sin retorno, utilidad consciente y airosa, despoja a mamá Natura de vida, quiebra las entrañas de la tierra verde, muere reseca y mutilada bajo la mirada indolente de los que comen de su plato sin capacidad de crear y servir ha dejado de dar frutos su chugada comprende que ha sido proscrita se conduce a la catástrofe de la inexistencia gracias gracias Gladys Gracias, Gladys. Para comentarios rápidamente. Primero, it is very important to speak very close to the microphone so people watching online can uh, hear me. Okay? That's, three, that's key. Okay? Not for us, you know, but for people that may be in the streaming. It's muy importante hablar cerca del micrófono para que nos escuchen en el streaming porque de vez en cuando están escribiendo para decirme que no escuchan mucho. Pero también yo quiero tomarme un, un minuto de para saludar a algunas personas. Maureen Oman, Seamus Scammon, Benjamin Anaya, Natasha Bado, Inés López Ramírez. Thank you. Thank you so much for commenting on this uh, uh, America Story Festival of New York. I, we know that there are a lot of people watching. We have, at this time, we have 26 people watching in the streaming, but these are the, the persons who took, it, took the time to uh, comment on uh, the streaming. Sabemos que no 26 personas ahora mismo en línea, pero esas son las personas que se han tomado un momento para comentar. Regina Cañas, Regina Cañas, thank you, Regina. Gracias, Regina. ¿Y de qué manera ahora? Colombia. Carolina Sánchez. Vamos, Carolina. Buenas noches. Estoy muy contenta de estar aquí. Recuerdo que cuando llegué a Estados Unidos hace tres años, este fue el primer, el primer festival de poesía que asistí y sigo volviendo a esta sala. Entonces, les agradezco mucho a Carlos Abasaco, a Carlos Velázquez, que se viene a haber reunido en esta hermosa ocasión eh, y siento muy honrada este año estar participando en el de los poemas. Eh, I'm very happy to be here. I come to this festival year after year since I uh, arrived here in the United States and I thank Carlos, Carlos and Irene for this space and I'm going to read some old poems with trans translation and also some uh, new works I have been uh, writing the last months. Genealogía. Presento el pájaro, vestido de negro, era mi abuela, llegando a tierras lejanas, 
donde la soledad era una forma de vida. Presiento a mi abuela pájaro aterrizar en este páramo, huérfana, extranjera, de silencio filoso, la posesión rígida bajo el cuello y sabelín, austera, como, un, como una casa de protestantes en el campo, aséptica y cruel. Mi abuela comprendió pronto, no podía hablar, no podía pensar, no podía. Cumplió su sentencia, sabía, lo único permitido era morir. El pájaro de mal acuerdo que era mi abuela sigue viendo el mundo con espanto a través de mis ojos. Gracias, now English. Genealogy. I foresee the bird dressed in black. It was my grandmother arriving from distant lands where solitude was a way of being. I foresee my grandmother bird landing in this moor, orphan, foreigner, with sharpened silence, which stands under the Elizabethan collar, austere like a Protestant's home in the country, assertive and cruel. My grandmother realized early she couldn't speak, she couldn't think, not aloud. She served her sentence. Knowing the only thing aloud was to die. The bird carrying back luck, my grandmother was, still stares the word with fright through my eyes. Duramada. Enfrentada a un límite invisible que súbitamente derribará tu cuerpo como una gran ola, dejándote jadeando, desconcertada. Tu defensa es buscar los indicios, el desafío articulado con las letras de tu nombre. Muy bien. These are, by the way, self-translations. Eh, I was experimenting here. Dura madre. Confronted with an invisible wind that will suddenly knock your body down like a great wave, leaving you panting, disconcerted. <coughs> your defense is to hunt for the signs of the defiance formulated with the letters of your name. Herencia. Un dolor con nombre propio en las tres voces de mis tres abuelas. Un coro, no. Un llanto, no, un susurro, de tres voces y tal vez ninguna historia, o una historia que intentaron borrar tres veces, una grieta que heredamos. Heritage, a pain with its own name, in the voices of my three grandmothers, no chorus, no crying, a whisper, or three voices perhaps without a story or a history that they tried to erase three times and inherited with Y eh, voy a leer ahora dos poemas nuevos en español. El primero lo escribí luego de leer una noticia que explicaba cómo funcionaban científicamente las supernovas. La explosión mide la cantidad de tiempo necesario para que la luz nos alcance. La gravedad es una curvatura que dora los cuerpos, mientras el universo se expande. Una sola estrella explotó hace 10 mil millones de años, mucho antes de se formara nuestro propio sol. El destello de esa luz, de esa explosión, acaba de llegar hasta nosotros. ¿Suena como un requiem? Y este último poema es un poema por el cargo eh, que escribí eh, para una líder social de mi país que fue asesinada. Onilda María Díaz Urán. Para Onilda escribo este poema por ahí. Remuevo la tierra de las palabras. Tu voz ya subterránea se hace grito bajo la montaña, ola de tierra, donde acaba la cordillera y los brazos de agua dulce se extienden hacia el mar. Las palabras que sembraste en la Asociación Nacional de Reservas Campesinas, guardan tu nombre y preguntan por ti. En la Asociación de Campesinos del Alto Sinú, guardan tu nombre y preguntan por ti. En la Junta de Acción Comunal Pérez de Allano del Tigre, guardan tu nombre y preguntan por ti. Levanta la cabeza desde la tierra, la planta que sembraste, 
tiene la piel dura de corteza de árbol, tu esposo toma David, las flores de tus manos, las de tu hija y tu esposo, están cubiertas de tierra, la misma de la labranza, las plantas que sembraste abren todas sus ramas para aferrarse a la vida, las palabras que sembraste guardan tu nombre y nos preguntan por ti. Now, uh, welcome back, Elaine Nadal. Hi everyone, I'm so excited to be here. Hola, buenas noches. I'm going to do two poems back to back first. Uh, the first one's called Eating, the second one is called Stay Silent. She was making rice and stirring the pot of the wind stop. Beautifully, meticulously, at your son. I contemplated her. Smells good, right, Mija? A plethora of flowers from the heavens, magenta, purple, blue, and silver. They descended gracefully, little, little lad, little, little lad, carrying me to a fertile land. I saw a pirarito delighted in the freshly cut grass. With a melody on his lips and gave us his tattered hands, he scattered the seeds with care. Magia. Mommy continued mixing, a sprinkling of water on my head. Warm, therapeutic, relajante. I closed my eyes, releasing a weariness, but my peace was interrupted. She stopped stirring, and I awoke to an empty stove. No beauty sound, no flowers, no song. Ay, no digas nada, que se caiga la lengua, no digas nada, se te caiga la lengua, no digas nada. It takes four generations to bring a curse. Mother told sister she won't have kids because she's that seed. Poor sister lost five. Four miscarriages in one stillborn. Stay still spell read by her giver who began it from her maker who got it from his creator. Push, push the jinx away. Sister prayed. Mother thought her prayers were no good because they were either too soggy or too stale and missing some grit and bone and flowers ain't going to grow. She needs to pray harder. She needs to push more. But she's got a sincere heart, Mom. Push. Push the jinx away. Mother said sister's got a dirty heart and she needs to make herself good. Drink these soapy suds. Cleanse your tongue. Purify your insides. That's going to make her sick, Mom. Push, push the jinx away. Sister pushed stillborn baby. Baby never cried, sister often cries. Therapist told her to meditate, and she meditates in her cage for four minutes and 33 seconds. She's got the faith of a mustard seed and the hatred of a mountain. This next one is called For You Hold. For You Hold, what do you dream about? A boat sailing the ocean, a ground covered in cherry blossoms, a pearl inside an oyster. In wakefulness you wait with an open heart and hands ready to offer in a given moment a light. Hope. In your absence there's no sun or moon. Where do you go hiding when doubt clings to you like your eyes of dead wood? Who holds your hand when loneliness lies at your step? I have forgotten the spark. I let it go out when daybreak appeared far away and delight to see like a once upon a time. Emptiness comes heavy and full and I no longer want to stay by for a piece of infinite sky. I will find you, my beloved constellation, though I'm afraid you might not come back.
lo va a leer el español también, el español para ti esperanza. Para ti esperanza, ¿en qué sueñas? Un bote navegando el océano, un suelo cubierto en flores de cerezo, una perla dentro de una ostra. En desvelo esperas con un corazón abierto y las manos listas para ofrecer en un momento dado una luz. Esperanza. En tu ausencia no hay sol ni luna. ¿Dónde te escondes cuando la duda se aferra como pelo de hielo sobre madera muerta? ¿Quién sostiene tu mano cuando la llanura se tienda a tu lado? Se me había olvidado la chispa. Dejé que se apagara cuando la aurora se veía lejana. Y el deleite parecía como un día hace una vez. El vacío llega lleno y pesado, y yo ya no quiero atenerme a solo la posibilidad de un pedazo de cielo infinito. Te encontraré, mi amada y bella constelación, aunque temo que ya regreses. I want a poet kind of love, carefully crafted, one that keeps falling in love, committed, ardent, and feverish to find and unveil to drink in symbolism. I want a poet kind of love, frustrated and eager to give a heart for the trinkets and treasures, afflictions and pleasures, one that leads for growth and sows seeds, that sinks to uplift and won't let go. Of the pen, of the words that come like a perennial stillness or a ephemeral enchantment. A poet kind of love, <coughs> a free verse or iambic pentameter, an ode for finding completion in the act of never being complete. For the captured moment, regardless of how dreadful, because someone is there to share it with. And the moon and the stars are not enough, and the flowers and trees are not enough. The overwhelming feeling, the impetus to embrace that kind of love that aligns and breathes metaphors and similes, that grips and grapples for continuity, a flow, a progression of more stanzas yet to be written. And my last one is called Beyond. I found the answers when the sky was layered in thick lavender and celestial blue. I am a medicine woman, though my breast have never produced milk and my womb is barren. I'm not that seed. My name has a face comprised of geometrical shapes and eight notes. I am whole. I delight in the taste of strawberries before I slumber. The sweetness makes up a moon, and I dream of incredible things that I can make happen, despite being worn down by distorted figures and dismissed by pale caresses. My body heals, our bodies heal on their own, with the help of others, with the love from beyond. Thank you so much. Gracias. Gracias a uh, EA. Uh, para continuar, quiero llamar a Elizabeth Lara, from here, Estados Unidos. Vamos, Elizabeth. Eh, 
So the first poem is from the anthology, and it's about something that happened to me. The fear came later. I was already in my seventh decade when we climbed an eight-foot fence to enter a protected section of Mejupe National Forest. The year before Jose and Maria passed over Puerto Rico, failing to spare anyone, stripping the mountainsides down to their souls. Our guide was Loco, hotel recommended. I wore my bathing suit, hiking pants with secrets in her pocket, insect repellent mountain shirt, sneakers. In her pictures, I am hatless. He led us to the trailhead, his compact frame slipping easily past the no trespassing sign and over the chained gate. As I saw two holes in the wire fence, I wondered how he had overlooked my age and bulk. Under the canopy, we didn't feel the blazing sun, didn't notice how the old mine road underfoot was covered in moss and sheddings of trees, outer edge marked by the ruined pipe of the aqueduct. Most places wide enough for only one person to pass. Promised a short rainforest tour, we stopped first at a narrow run where we could have jumped in for a swim. Droplets popped into the air as water hit the boulders and settled in a large pool. From a gap farther in and higher up, we saw the curve of the coast east towards Playa Escondida. To our right, a drop of 1,000 feet, and to our left, the mountain rising 1,000 feet, and on until we reached the empty bones of a building, a ghost wrapped in the atlas, roof punched through by tapanuku trees and giant ferns, where we halted and stared. Our guide nudged us farther and farther into the forest, to a clearing, another river, another chance to swim. Five miles in, it began to rain, drops like bullets penetrating the thick growth above us. No time to think about being afraid. What I thought as the rain came down was that five miles in meant five miles out, our path over the rocks and the curve of the pipe the fallen leaves slippery beneath our feet, the valley a thousand feet below. Mm. Under construction, no egress. Weight bearing, block, brick, stone, Chain link, badlands to the south, to the north. Who asked the Rio Grande's permission? How long the footing? How wide the gate? The latch, the lock, the key. It is rebar, high wired. Tell us what's the voltage? In construcción sin salida, muro de carga, bloque, ladrillo, piedra, valle metálica, zona baldía, hacia el sur, hacia el norte. ¿Quién pidió permiso a Río Grande? ¿De qué largo la zapata? ¿De qué ancho el portón? El vestido, el candado, la llave. Es armadura electrificada. Di, ¿cuál es el botaje? Um, just for context, um, I've spent quite a bit of time in the Dominican Republic, and um, this is a, an experience I had one day. 
Santo Domingo in 2005, old revolutionaries, curious how the wind is blowing up through the chasm between the two facades facing each other, each other like hostile armies. How the words of the pensioners sitting on the stoop are a rippling river passing over smooth stones. How they sit on the shady side, their hands still scrubbing away the grit from the dirt floors of the shacks where they hid during the revolution. They remember how the bullets took Jorge and Raul and Juanita's abuelo. How the invaders shot Alberto's wife and children first. How Tia Julia delivered arepa and rice and beans. How the day the flagpole gave way, nearly striking Francisco in the belly, it didn't much matter, since they jumped so quickly to catch it before the ornament dashed his skin. Because it wasn't the Dominican flag that fell with the stars and stripes. Curious how today, 40 years later, as I pass by, their stories halt in mid-sentence, their heads all turn at once, North Americana, like the Marines who landed in 1916 and again in 1965. Santo Domingo 2005, Viejos Revolucionarios. Curioso como sopla el viento a través del abismo entre las dos fachadas cara a cara como ejércitos enemigos. Como las palabras de los jubilados sentados en la escalinata son un río ondulante pasando sobre tierras lisas. Como se sienten en el lado bajo la sombra, sosteniendo en las manos el recuerdo de la arena de los pisos de tierra de las casuchas donde se escondieron durante la revolución. Recuerdan cómo las balas se llevaron a Jorge y Raúl y al abuelo de Juanita. Cómo los invasores dispararon primero a la esposa y los hijos de Alberto. Cómo la tía Julia repartía arepa y arroz con las bichuelas. Como el día que se desplomó el astro de la bandera, casi golpeando a Francisco en el vientre, no importa tanto, ya que saltara tan rápido para atraparlo, para que lo dono no le cortara la piel, porque no fue la bandera dominicana la que cayó, sino la de Barras y Estrellas. Curioso que hoy, 40 años después, al verme pasar, como sus historias se detienen a mitad de frase, todas sus cabezas giran a la vez, gringa. Como los marines que se desembarcaron en el 1916 y nuevamente en el 1965. Gracias, Elizabeth. Y ahora vamos a Colombia nuevamente. En la tu Mónica Lucía Suárez Beltrán. ¡Oh, Mónica! Mónica, pegada al micrófono. Me escuchan en Colombia. Buenas noches. Eh, quiero dar las gracias a una persona que me ha acompañado estos días y a la gente que me va a ayudar leyendo en inglés. Latido. Tengo dos corazones ahora, el mío en el costado y el suyo en mi vientre. ¿Cómo flota la luz en el agua de un vientre? Su latido danza por mi cuerpo, se mueve dentro mío un camino, recorre todo lo que he venido siendo, lo que he querido ser, cómo no cuidarlo, cómo no guardar el lugar que habita quien conoce todos tus secretos, puedo darle ahora el agua, la luz, el sueño, la música, 
y las palabras. It's a pleasure to read these translations that were done by her translator. John Mario Cadex. John Mario um, Since I'm a translator, I always like to name the translators. Heartbeat. I have two hearts now. Mine on my side and his in my womb. How does the light float in the water of a womb? His heartbeat dances through my body. Within myself, a path is moving. Walks through all that I have been and what I wanted to be. How could I not take care of him? How could you not save this place that inhabits someone who knows all your secrets? Now I can give him the water, the light, the sleep, the music and the words. El sueño de la mujer que sueña. No salió del barro que hizo la figura y entregó por ella una parte de su cuerpo. No comió frutas prohibidas. Nació el primer día. Antes de la luz nació. Hizo su casa en el árbol sola. Escribió cuentos, historias, cantos nuevos. Viajó a tierras prometidas y cumplidas. Volvió al jardín y creó el primer poema. The dream of the woman who dreams. She did not come out of the mud that made the figurine and gave up a part of his body for her. She did not eat forbidden fruits. She was born on the first day. Before the light, she was born. She made her house in the tree alone. She wrote tales, stories, new songs. She traveled to promised and fulfilled lands. She went back to the garden and created the first poem. Bueno, eh, y voy a leer dos poemas en español <laughs> de cosas que ocurren en Colombia. Bueno, son tristes, pero quiero cantarlas. Río, quiero bautizar mi canto por ellos con el hilo de tu sangre olvidada. La matria sabe que hay huesos bajo tierra y sin embargo nacen flores de su vientre recién bañado por la lluvia. Caen gotas encima de la fosa, de ella nada florece porque no hay nombres a quien cantar no hay olvidos ni recuerdos que permitan tejer la memoria de sus días. Es la casa de todos que a la vez son ninguno. Quiero bautizar mi canto por ellos con el hilo de tu sangre olvidada al río. Así sabremos de quién eran esos restos y botaremos sus cenizas en tu cauce. Quizás solo entonces tendrán un nombre antes de hallar sus cuerpos, un nombre que antecede sus huesos y será escrito en la fosa. Y esto en la ciudad ahora. Corre pronto, niño mío, que las balas del odio no rompan tu sueño. Déjame cantar un poco, antes que tu sangre regada en la ciudad cruce la esquina. Tu sangre que me latió dentro y ahora moja los charcos 
y salpica los pies de quienes pasan. No te reprocho, mi niño, saliste a reclamar vida, gritaste, gritaste, por los que no gritan y ocupan un lugar en el vacío. Saliste por los fantasmas quietos y silenciados, llenos de miedo y cansancio. Déjame cantar un poco por tu sangre que es la mía y ahora también de las calles, de mi vientre y de mi llanto. Gracias. Is running faster. Um, okay. I want to call Kermia Mari, please. Come here, Kermia. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, thank you, everyone. This first poem is called Oceans. A womb without water is a desert. For are all barren women lost at sea? I have an ocean inside of me and I am empty. I am battered by the sea in one dream and float on cool clear water in another. It is turquoise, teal, blue, cerulean, sea foam green, salty air scent grains on cheeks, free, clean, hands grip wooden railings, and stare deep into depths so blue and untouched. I am alone in a way, though I don't know who steers the ship, just that I am going, and something better lies ahead than floating, lonely, or sinking like stone. I don't know where I'm leaving or where I'm going, only deep blue has your peace. Voyager. The fate of a boat is unknown, but they sail anyway. My third great grandfather left the lovely thought in the ship, night after New York in 1846. Years later, that ship left New York for San Francisco, and that ship left San Francisco for Alaska. And that ship sunk off the Alaskan coast. The Oneida are the people of the standing stone. Long ago, when being chased through the woods, the Oneida people suddenly disappeared, woe and behold, by turning themselves into stone, evading their enemies, escaping harm. The stone is at home in the woods, rests easy on the ground heavy to see. A ship needs a name, a ship made for people, a ship that made its way around the world. India, France, Peru, Australia, England, America, land, nature, the Oneida, Iroquois, people. A ship that was sold to the Alaskan salmon trade and struck a ledge off the Alaskan coast sinking like namesake stone. It's called Red Hawk. The other day, a Red Hawk circled the sky from across the country. A woman held up her camera and said, look. In my dream, I had a camera with film I spliced in two and then inserted the roll so each photo I took split down the middle. 
I hold it steady and aim as my eyes saw Red Hawk's vision, perceptive and distant. A photo is instant connection. Somewhere in Boston, I searched for a place to sleep, but there were no vacancies. A trip I planned to make, but didn't take. In order to pass the time in the loneliness of the night, I took photos of strangers on the streets without knowing we were all dreaming. And when I awake, I don't take any of them with me. Thank you. This next is a uh, Dove and Raven. A love that loves you at the same time, the same weight, the same amount of space to breathe and reach across. It is ordinary to dream. Sometimes it is dialogue. Other times it is silence. The shape takes form in the shadows. The hand reaching out folds into darkness. Why does it seem like something almost happens but nothing ever does? A dove that nose dives and the bloom of feathers that follow. To be told in another dream by a woman who plucks the feathers from a raven still, just because it hasn't happened yet doesn't mean it never will. This is a short one, this is my last poem, it's called Painting. In my dream last night, it's you, but you of age. A little haggard in your face, just lines that stretch across your cheeks. The room is you, a seat and an easel. The spotlight shines on you, fully submerged in darkness. I emerge from the midpoint, knowing nothing of my own beginnings. When I find you, you are painting. When you turn to me, your head is bowed, shoulders forward. A sad look in your eyes, a deep frown embedded in the lines of your face. Lips pronounced. If any words are said, they are not remembered. Not by me, not now as we age, even in dreams. If you brought me a message, it is lost on me. I have forgotten the rest of it. This is your dream now. This is the time that, um, for honoring the memory of Dominican poet Jose Miguel de la Rosa. And for this, I want to call Tony Aleon, his love and translator. Good evening. Thank you for honoring Jose's memory and for being here to celebrate poetry with him. He would always sit and listen so carefully to everybody's poems and he always told me about all the poems that they are the buscada, the search of poetry songs. Uh, voy a empezar con un poema que se llama en español Self. He sacado a patadas a mi self de su habitación. Le hice unos zapatos de la noche para que saliera con otro tipo. 
a limpiar nuevos caminos. Le di una espada para que la llevara en la mano derecha y en la otra una flor. Antes de partir, lo colgué de una almendra, le di una pela y le apreté el cuello, le mordí la lengua, le comí el pelo, le metí dos libros en las ajilas y le puse a andar. So, I've asked myself from his usual dwelling place. Then I cobbled some shoes for him from the night so he could go forth like Don Quixote to slash new paths. I armed him with a rusty sword to carry in his right hand and in his left a flower. Before leaving, I tied him to an almond tree, gave him a licking, tightened his collar, did his tongue, ate up his hair, tucked a book under each armpit, and sent him on his way. Bienvenidos a Santo Domingo. Dos ojos pegados a unas alas descubren la vida. Una mujer cata el mar a caribe en la cabeza. La tarde planchadita se resume en las vidrieras. Mariposas de papel, flores de celofán, chichiguas soñadoras de cualquier jardín. Brota una colombrina, es alguien que sonríe. Un perro sarnoso conversa con una costurera. Hasta la conciencia huye bajo el sol tropical. Una palmera es una muchacha en sus mejores tiempos. Un hombre camina descalzo, será un dios de un sueño. Un enjambre de obreros o gota a la luz del día. La tristeza se vierte en una batea o se quema en un inmenso fuego. El humo es el mejor aliado de esta ciudad. Una cigarra hace su nido en las pestañas. Bienvenidos al país de las maravillas. Me hace también la pausa porque Welcome to Santo Domingo. Two eyes glued to wings gaze down at life in DR. At the waterfront, a woman carries the Caribbean Sea on her head. The afternoon, neatly ironed out, reflects itself in the storefront. Paper butterflies, cellophane flowers, sleepy tropical birds, from the warm earth of any garden, a wood thrush may bloom. It's someone's smile. A flea-bitten dog consults a down-in-the-heels seamstress. Here, even consciousness boils over beneath the sultry sun. A palm tree was a young girl in her better days. A barefoot man who ambles along may be a sleepwalking deity. A swarm of workers use up the daylight, then sadness overflows from a washed up or is burned up in a blaze, raging blaze. Steamy sock is on the most intimate terms with this city. A cicada builds its nest in someone's eyelashes. Welcome to Wonderland. <laughs> Para la última postcard, te escribo desde abril. Esta ciudad puerto es estacionaria, desde el centro de este sueño, entre aleteos de pájaros y el ruido de serenas y de la algarabía de la gente. 
después de jardín de palabras, desde este mercado casi nocturno que escribo. Postcard. <clears throat> I'm writing you from this port city known as April, crossroads of the seasons, from the center of the stream, among the flapping wings of birds, the screeching of sirens, and the joyful din of the crowds, from this garden of words, from this marketplace at dusk, I'm writing you. Okay. Thank you. This is a hard act to follow, and uh, voy a leer cuatro poemas breves, solo en su versión en castellano, aunque desde el principio ha sido un libro mío bilingüe. Uh, is there anyone who does not understand Spanish? Okay, I will provide some context for two of the poems, but I think we are kind of getting close to the end, and I don't think much time. El primero es un rey en un estacionamiento. This is uh, a poem that I wrote about a piece of news. A few years ago, uh, some workers found some human remains outside of the city of Leicester in England. And uh, DNA tests proved that to be the remains of King Richard III, of Chester Penn, no, my horse, my uh, horse, my king of horse. So that reads on the third, and so I wrote the poem, Un Rey en un Estacionamiento, a king in the parking lot. Dice un barco que querías un caballo, que cambiarías por él todo tu reino. Y tú que eras un soberano poderoso, un monarca con ambición sin límites, acabaste tus días en Bosworth Field, y tu reino fue un erial, un campo humilde que hoy no es más que un estacionamiento de vehículos. Allí dormiste muchas noches, muchos años, en la tierra que antes había sido tuya, hasta que llegaron unas máquinas excavadoras a interrumpir tu sueño con su estruendo irreverente, y ni un rey se libró de que sus huesos anduvieran revueltos entre residuos orgánicos y el aceite quemado que pierde el cárter en los automóviles. Verás, Ricardo, en el fondo va a ser cierto que después de la muerte <laughs> un cuerpo tomó un mal. Es un cuerpo como un golpe de palo. Igual que un oleaje de movimiento ondulado, envolvente y caricioso. Es un cuerpo para zambullirse, para nadar por él o dejarse llevar a la deriva para hundirse en su dimensión más placentera y líquida, para olvidar que existe el tiempo y encajar en su escarpada geografía. Es un cuerpo para volar eternamente y nunca desear llegar a ir. Uh, the next poem, Esperando la vida junto a Blows, Awaiting Life by Blows, en Athens, Georgia, donde viví unos cuantos años, donde vivo con mis hijos, hay una tienda de clothes, there is a clothes store, do it yourself store, and outside, in the parking lot, that's a gathering place for many Hispanics, undocumented Hispanics, who wait for somebody to come hire them for the day, and pay them, not knows how much they get or they work. And there was a police raid a few years ago, and uh, many were arrested, so I wrote this poem, Esperando la vida junto a Dios. Antes de que a su rostro llegue la tibia brisa maldita, antes de que el sol inicie su andadura perezosa, se pone la chamarra con premura para no llegar tarde por si el patrón tiene a bien madurar. 
y sale de casa en la caja de una droga, mientras en la ciudad las sombras se van arrinconando. El destino de su peregrinaje estaba escrito desde el principio de los tiempos, antes incluso de que hubiera fronteras. Nada quedó al azar. Y cuando llega a Lowe's, sus ojos tienen el brillo de la melancolía y mira a todas partes por si alguno de aquellos individuos fuera acaso un agente de la migra. Hoy espera desde el amanecer y exhibe sin pudor su mercancía. Un par de brazos es todo lo que tiene. Mano de obra barata, disponible para el patrón por unos pocos dólares. Esas manos resecas y agrietadas podían contar historias de una frontera hostil, escribir la crónica de un río que divide una llanura inhóspita, o dibujar el rostro de la muerte que habita en cuatro tierras. Pero ahora, mientras aguarda junto a dos, sabe, nadie sabe lo que pasa por su mente. Tal vez piense en la madre anciana que dejó en piedras negras, o en el padre que apenas conoció porque lo balearon una noche en que se desataron todas las cuñas en la tierra. Pero esta mañana, mientras espera junto a los, Coahuila es un mundo inexistente y solo importa los chamacos y esa mujer que aguarda su regreso, llevando entre las manos resecas y agrietadas el fuego de los dioses, fruto de su trabajo. Y, para terminar... Un soneto de mi libro eh, Las huellas de Atú, que es un libro exclusivamente de sonetos, es una poetry collection que es comprised exclusively of sonnets, so I will read this sonnet, La comunión de la sacrida. Me acerco hasta tu altar piadosamente, me postro de rodillas y a mi altura se muestra en su esplendor una espesura. Hoy se viento y desastre en tu corriente. Me encuentro con tu carne frente a frente. Su sabor me enloquece y me tortura. Comulgo entre tus piernas con locura, saboreando tu vigor ardiente. Bendita esta pasión que necesita la manzana prohibida en el vergel donde tu cuerpo, en mi amor, palpita. Yo como y bebo y reverente de él. Y no creo en más Dios que el que en ti habita, ni hay más cielo que el cielo. Intense feelings. 
I, I love that, again, I found poetry and how it, it, uh, my heart just, um, I, I would say it was kind of purified, uh, gave me a purified sense of how to enter into feelings and experiences over um, any kind of, well, you know, story, plot about your life, right? So that's what this is, and I'm exploring it, and um, uh, I guess that's all I wanted to say. Um, I'm just looking. Um, it's probably enough to say. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, read a quote from a man who probably most people in the world think is the greatest man that ever lived. Be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Jesus Christ. That's a new one for me. I didn't I just recently found that. I prayed for them to release you, but my prayer hands didn't work. My arms opened instead, and I started to fly. That's a girl butterfly. The little kid said, I'll get it. He lunged for me. I could not speak back. He ran to grab me. I cringed. I could be caught. I would be crushed. I could hear his adult thoughts. The butterfly is a woman. They prefer to be beautiful, and men prefer to be static. Butterflies cannot walk and salute. If they do, they will be brought down. One child's thoughts interrupted his, and he said, you will be brought to earth where you will be conditioned and to follow as soldiers to the military cause. I am gone to any feeling as I try to cope with this stasis. Warrior bulges in discreet discernment. Mine is the body that creates future calamities that I've now avoided. Strong men raise their arms. Some shake their fists. Others carry guns. Soldiers have thin arms that wobble, but their aim is exact. They know what they hate. Men with a feminine pallor, men with a gentle smile, captivating in the most discreet sense. I am watching this scenario. Soldiers raise their guns from the ground floor and shoot up at me. My wings come apart, and I fall faster than expected. They are breaking apart as I continue to suppress a dry cough. I think, why do I care about coughing anymore? And I fall as one butterfly through a broken mass of migrating butterflies. They catch me and carry me forward. Duration eternal and knowing that is escape of being where innate wisdom grows. Butterfly and buckling through blinding wind, the future voices that I hear are the sounds of suffering. I'm hearing the knocks, restless knocks, of the ordained as they recapture their efforts. They will never cease. They are captivated by echoes. They do not realize that I am here, that I am listening to every single one. Priority seemed to be with those who have called me into mind. I saw my mother. She threw away clothes as she laid mine out 
on the throne table. She put away baby pictures, wrapping them in linen. She sat next to a candle before her bed. Her face dared not cry for fear the neighbors would see. I had never seen my mother with candles. She had a fear of fire. I started to wonder about motherhood and the tragedies associated with it all. She always yearned for an identity and purpose, trapped in a small town and in the swell of gossip that was increasingly difficult to be an optimist. In my disembodied eyes, I could see them in the distance in a high and tall structure through one picture window, my mother folding laundry while sitting at the kitchen table. I shouted, I forgive you. Don't worry about me. It was a message that was important and I repeated it many times. My father was out the door behind her, settled in his work, ax in his hand. He paused and it didn't seem like he would ever move again. The loneliness of them was killing me worse than any physical pain could ever have been. When I got close to the tower, all the windows shut. I collected myself at the base of the structure. I was not going to be disappointed. I'd sacrificed too much to see them like this. I, I wanted them to see me through, but I didn't want to surprise anyone. I knocked politely. A kid appeared on the roof and then he noticed an eye, the black shining sun that wobbled over his silhouette. He shouted instructions at me. I'll open up for you. The main door opened of its own volition and I went through. But no one was there. I could hear the boy at the top of the steps. Listen, I'm knocking for you. Follow the sound of it. This is my age and it will always be. Trust yourself. Use a system of waves. All I can do is use my body. I will use it and leverage myself against the disbelievers. I jumped again, this time knowing I would not hit bottom, I was ready to fly. This was all about trusting myself. As I fell, became the air. This was unlike the air of thoughts. I did not fall in the abyss, instead I was rising and falling on the fluidity of air, pulled up, down a little, then higher. I may drown in it, that is possible, but I promise to work towards the surface. I use both my arms and hands, wiggle free of static pressure, stored anger. I'm in a delicate and heavy frame of mind. I enter an arcane temple of the black sun, particles of air flutter back in symbols drifting up at me. This is a technique, a technique I'd like to share with you. Just in case you're ever in trouble with yourself and your own self-harming thoughts, a technique called butterfly strokes. I won't put these things into your letter again because I realize that mom and dad, this isn't an official letter to you. It's a letter to me. inspired me and I read Edgar Allan Poe yesterday so here's again the hope in that I wanted to read that today so this is one of the other poets um, that on the I call the light side the, the hope side hope is a thing with feathers Emily Dickinson hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul Sing the tune without the words and never stops at all. And the sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in 
extremity, it asked a crumb of me. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And uh, I have two more points. And uh, it's very difficult for me to be here counting minutes, seconds. Okay. <laughs> And I want to call Thomas Galan, and the last one will be Jennifer Rathbone. Bienvenido, Thomas Galan. se llama bueno, un fragmento del pueblo se llama todavía tengo esperanza de ser negro está dedicado a varias poetas, dos de ellos son uno de oriundo de Haití y el otro de la República Dominicana eh, sus ancestros eran de las islas inglesas eh, ya que hombre no Juan Sánchez Labú, y a los fundadores del movimiento de la ley de un LSC, el José de Segor, y le han dado. Algún día llegaré a esa hazaña apoteósica, un negro black, black, de verdad, aunque la pureza sea el mito medieval, o un negro white black, o brown, con leche, un negro que no se defienda de su piel, ni siquiera de la ausencia del color, en la poesía de todas las vanguardias. Un hombre que no sea de color noble, oscuro, como el gran estebanico del Caribe anglosajón, el Sancho Panza de cabeza de vaca, que sea un negro auténtico, asintomático, que no sufra de la enfermedad venérea de la negación de la dicha nocturna. También el año como un negro humano, tan claro como la piel falsa de las promesas frustradas en los Balcanes, aunque sea un negro sin palmeras libres, un gitano que nunca fue sedentario, sin tamboras, sin baracas sordas, un negro que lee a Alá al revés, puede ser musulmán, budista, marcial, hombres, otro esclavo del deseo migratorio, no aquel que vive en la nostalgia de un pasado sepultado entre los muros, de una segregación baldía, de misterios oscuros, de sexualidad distanciosa. Algún día llegaré a ser tan negro como James Baldwin o Tony Morrison, y tan inmenso como Maya Angel, o dudoso como un cosaco expatriado por las mismas dudas de Phyllis Whitley. Tenía siete años cuando fue puesta en venta en un mercado negro de Boston. Nunca volvió al tan tan de Senegal. Le arrancaron el tótem de la libertad cargó con el nombre de un barco y el apellido de un traficante de esclavos negros. Hubo una impresión nefasta en su destino. Se le convertía en carne de cañón genial. Seguramente será una buena yegua. Ella era más occidental que yo. Presentaba los clásicos. Algún día llegaré a ser un negro que no hable el buen francés ni tampoco inglés, un negro de la Jamaica profunda, del reggae creado de Bob Marley, o un exiliado de la hispanofilia del Caribe, un haitiano sin fronteras inútiles, un negro capaz de ser parte de un mariachi un patricio con salitre del condado de Bronx, o un negro que no tema tener la piel blanca, como Federico García Lorca, 
o el simpar discípulo de Dionisio Carlos, o la piel negra de una mujer rubia, o ser afrodescendiente con célula de identidad de un indigenismo romántico. Nadamos bajo, la, bajo el sincretismo secreto de un fuerte que nunca dejó de ser apache. Perdón, he estado. Eh, soy un poco un estado fallido en eh, los últimos dos días. Sorprendente como Rosa Park, o utópico como el reverendo Martin Luther King, o albino como un cordero de la familia de un Dios Yoruba que pierde su palabra gratuitamente. Cristianamente, hasta por un cigarrillo electrónico, no importa si no recuerda sus más remotos milagros o si se quita la máscara sagrada de la monotonía de la edad. Naces y mueres con total impunidad cuando pasamos a ser historia patria, cesan las banderas, las fronteras los mares y los prejuicios fronterizos del buen salvado. No me importa ser un negro juguetón, capaz de flotar en el mar de la esperanza a cualquier hora de la historia, aunque muera en un Mediterráneo dudoso, o leyendo en un poema en el canal de la mona a los sicarios que no llegaron a tiempo en busca de sus raíces más remotas. No importa si su leyenda era blanca o si creyeron borrarte de la paz de la tierra, no tiene cabida entre los apóstoles de Cristo. Incapaz de defender su redención, aunque no haya salvado a los negros al excluirlo de la última cita o de la siesta, normalizada por estos días virulentos, morimos rumiando un arco iris primo, tan desechable como un testamento peregrino. Este mira es el pequeño pueblo. por su poema The Poet Size Love. Aquí hay otra versión. Su vuelo, su silencio. La vida con el poeta, dicen, ha de ser maravillosa. Por la mañana versos, estribillos en la tarde y en las noches, poemas. El canto del poeta, dicen, ha de llenar la alcoba con ritmos, rimas y metáforas hermosas. Nadie, nadie conoce el lado oscuro del poeta. Digo, ¿cómo he de explicarles el silencio cuando su vuelo no encuentra? And I'm going to finish with um, three short poems that are dedicated to my son, since we are in the Consulate General of the Argentine Republic building. And the only time I traveled to Argentina, it was with my son, and I pushed him around in a stroller. He's now a man, and he lives here in New York. Green room. Paint a room green for a little boy. Green to grow with hope and luck. Green for the frogs he'll catch in the pond, royal green his joy, calm, smooth, and round. 
Green for the room that hosts him before taking center stage. Green because I love him green. The fourth color of the rainbow, gift of the archangel to give and receive. Green room for my little boy to welcome him home man to the hearth that cradled him and put a violin in his hands. I send you my son, New York. I send you my son. I know you've been praised in many a verse and film and song and every art form, but now, New York, I send you my son, my son who was cradled in song, nurtured on verse, who cared for his little sister. My son who was raised in a small town, my little brown son who has two languages, dos, which I know are yours too. And now, New York, I send you my son. Protect him, shelter him from your pandemic, your skyscrapers, your traffic, your city that never sleeps. Give him your arms, your rhythms. Give him your love, your immigrant city love. Give him ice. Give him your I speak Spanish, your all are welcome here, love. Give him your beacon of light. May he shine from within. Now, New York, I send you my son. Shelter him from the cold, from the knives, from the crime around the corner, from your wind when it bites and your bowels. New York, I send you my son. I carried him in this womb and released him to yours. Now, New York, give birth, give light, give song to my son. Translate silence. When you lived at home, this old four square with plaster walls and hardwood floors, Mendelssohn would ring down the halls, breath synchronized with cadenza, heart rate soaring with shifts. My fingers danced across the keyboard as yours fluttered along ebony lace with gold. Melodies encapsulated in every translated word. Now that the halls echo with your accents, I haven't yet learned how to translate the silence. It has to America Force is going to be looking to you tomorrow with one week in your place of vacation. And the result of that is one thing for one island. The closing ceremony will take place at the Instituto Cervantes on 49th Street and I think it's 3rd Avenue, right? And 3rd Avenue. Mañana continuamos en la casa de la tarde del poeta Walt Whitman en Huntington on Island a las 11 de la mañana. Uh, y seguiremos mm, en la noche con la clausura en el, el Instituto Cervantes de Nueva York, la calle 49 y la tercera avenida. For the poets reading tomorrow at the Walt Whitman Berkeley Association, remember that our bus is leaving from 8.45 at 8.45 from the hotel, ¿ok? Uh, I'll, I'll see you there. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much to the uh, uh, Consulate General and Promotion Center of the Argentine Republic. Y yo, muchísimas gracias al Consulado General y el Centro de Promoción de la República de Argentina, Nueva York. Gracias, gracias. 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 G